الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال الله تبارك وتعالى في القرآن الكريم يا أيها الذين آمنوا إنما الخمر والميسر والأنساب والأزلام رجس من عمل الشيطان فاجتنبوه لعلكم تفلحون صدق الله مولانا العظيم اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين سلاة وسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا رحمة للعالمين Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim After praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending Salutations, peace and blessings upon the best of creation The jewel and crown of creation, the beloved of Allah Almighty The coolness to our eyes, the purpose of our lives The reviver of our hearts, the inspirer to our minds, the awakener of our souls The most honored one, the most praised one, the most generous one, the most kind one Undoubtedly, he is the most beautiful one, none other than Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa barak wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Quran Al-Kareem Mentions and talks about many a thing Very important, pertinent and related to the daily life of a Muslim and not only does he speak about what is needed and necessary for a Muslim in his daily life we know the Quran consists of stories of the Anbiya wa Rusul stories of the previous prophets the Quran consists of commands and prohibitions do's and don'ts the Quran consists of the human biological system the Quran talks about the world the Sun the moon the stars it talks about the cosmos that are out there the Quran speaks about many different themes and topics and much has been discovered and learned through the Quran and there is yet so much more to discover within the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what science has discovered today 1400 years ago the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallama was sent the word of Allah almighty which spoke about this and so we see that the Quran has mentioned and we know that the Quran doesn't go into detail about certain things. Yet in other aspects the Quran delves into detail. Like how a child, a baby is formed inside the womb of the mother. The detail that Allah Almighty talks about this prior to Allah Almighty discussing and talking about this in the Quran it has never been mentioned in the previous civilizations that existed to go into such intricate detail of a fetus the, the placenta into a fetus and then into a, a, a baby body parts being formed bones bones will have flesh on it then life is breathed into it then life's given birth to it and how it continues Allah talks about this in detail but we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala touches on many things. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam elaborated. He further expanded and explained those. And we see thereafter the companions and the students of the companions and then the generations that followed up until now further explaining, elaborating what was understood through the words of the Prophet ﷺ, explaining the Quran and then what is understood through the words of Allah Almighty. So great detail and great extent and great amount of thought ulama have spent into understanding the Quran. 
And we find that in the Quran, though it talks about many different aspects of life, Allah Almighty in this specific verse which I recited warns us, tells us about the dangers of four specific actions. Four such actions that if the believers were to do, then it will cause them to be in difficulty and despair. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. يا أيها الذين آمنوا إنما الخمر والميسر والأنصاب والأزلام رجس من عمل الشيطان فاجتنبوه لعلكم تفلحون. O you who believe, O you who possess iman, the people of iman, أهل الإيمان. يا أيها الذين آمنوا. And whenever Allah Almighty begins a verse with يا أيها الذين آمنوا, then know that Allah Almighty is addressing the believers. He's addressing me and you. He's addressing the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ Immediately after taking the attention, demanding the attention of the believers, saying, O oh, you who believe, إِنَّمَا الْخَمْرُ وَالْمَيْسِرُ وَالْأَنْسَابُ وَالْأَزْلَامُ رِجْسٌ مِّنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ Intoxicants, all kinds of alcoholic drinks, والميسر gambling والأنساب والأزلام أنساب والأزلام were two practices that the ignorant Arabs used to do where they used to get arrows and then with those arrows they used to seek look or decision through them so they used to use them to seek look and uh, to to seek um, answers and decisions through them like horoscopes in today's day and age the equivalent of horoscopes or the equivalent of looking into my destiny and what my star signs are etc allah almighty said these are rijsum min amali shaitan these are from the impure actions of the devil these are the works of the devil fajtanibuhu stay away from it stay away from them do ijtinab, abstain from them, stay away from them. Fajtanibuhu, stay away from it. Yani the who, this damir, this pronoun, the four things have been mentioned, only who is one, is a singular pronoun. But the Mufassirin write that who here refers to all of them. It's referring to all four. Four have been mentioned, four is plural, is jama'ah. But who is singular wahid? Allah Almighty is saying that all four of these in reality are one. All of these one are in reality the actions of the devil. These are the impure actions of shaitan. These are the, the evil actions of the shaitan. And immediately after telling us to stay away from drinking alcohol, staying away from gambling, Staying away from seeking answers, decisions, and look through arrows. Staying away from these actions because they're the actions of the devil. Allah is telling us clearly, it's clear cut instruction that this is the devil's work. This is the devil's work. Drinking alcohol is the devil's work. Gambling is the devil's work. Ansab and Azlam is the devil's work. Stay away from it. And why? Then Allah tells us the reason why. Allah Almighty says, if you want to be saved and successful, لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Then stay away from it. So that you may be in falah. And falah, what does it mean? Success. Allah Almighty is very clearly instructing the believers that if you want to be successful, then stay away from the drink. If you want to be successful, stay away from drugs. If you want to be successful, then stop this akha and this gambling that's going on amongst young people. If you want to be successful, then you need to stay away from the actions, the works of the devil. These are the devil's works. The more you stay away from the devil's works, the more successful you will be. And the devil doesn't just have this work. I mean, this is why one of the great books, Muhaddith ibn al-Jawzi, rahimahullah, he wrote was Talbisul Iblis. Talbisul Iblis. 
the, the, deceptive, the deception of the devil. Yani the devil's deception. What the, the devil uses to deceive. And in there, Muhaddith ibn al jawzi rahimahullah, he writes all the, the stuff the devil uses. And he mentions other things aside from what Allah has mentioned here that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. Like riya, arrogance and pride. This is what the devil had. Anyone who has this, then he's following in the footsteps of the devil. This is the devil's work. But specifically, in this verse of the Quran, Muhaddith ibn al jawzi mentioned this in Al-Kaba'ir. Imam al-Zahabi mentions in the major sins as well. The drinking, alcohol, gambling, and sab and azlam, these are not minor sins. These are not minor sins that you can simply do, uh, you can simply do istighfar and they've gone. These are major sins. These are serious, serious crimes to be drinking alcohol. And how prevalent is drinking alcohol? How common is it? We live in a country which relies on alcohol for its economy to be sustained. And not just in this country, it's everywhere in the world. Whether it's at airports, whether it's in uh, uh, off licenses, whether it's in markets, whether it's in big superstores, alcohol is common. And the devil's used alcohol. The devil has used alcohol to misguide man. Allah Almighty has told us, stay away from it. For if you don't stay away from this, then you're going to be in problem. There's going to be a huge issue here. And is that not the case? How much do young lads spend on Grey Goose when they go out on a night out? How much do they spend on, on these alcoholic drinks? Hundreds. They'll book a table and they'll spend thousands on champagne to get drunk because it's a birthday party. They'll spend thousands to get drunk because it's a, it's a stag do. It's the night before my best friend's wedding, so we're going go, to We're going to get drunk. Thousands and, you know, never mind alcohol here in the West. It's, it's, it's accepted here in the West. As Muslims, we shouldn't accept it. But it's normal in this society, drinking alcohol, pubs and clubs. And this is the... Astaghfirullah wa Unfortunately, it is becoming normal now in Pakistan as well. I've seen it in our local villages. I've seen it in the, the big cities like Karachi and in Lahore and in Rawalpindi. This is a Muslim country. This is the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. And alcohol is common. Though it's illegal, though you can't carry it, anyone carrying it will be fined and will be punishable. But in underground, it is so common. You go into the big cities like Islamabad and Lahore, it's, it's not even underground. It's, it's readily available at PC hotels. Pearl Continental, it's, it's readily available in the big hotels. It's readily available and sold in restaurants. And then never mind Pakistan, you go into the Arab world, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, you go into Dubai, you go to Sharjah, you go to Qatar, you go to Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. These are Muslim countries that are relying on the sale of alcohol. And we know that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam cursed Allah Almighty curses, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Allah Almighty curses the one who drinks alcohol, the one who sells alcohol, the one who buys alcohol. Allah Almighty curses the one who, who imports alcohol, who exports alcohol. Allah Almighty curses the alcoholic. Yani the, Allah's lana is upon this person. The angels curse this person. The one who drinks, the one who exports, the one who imports we have Muslims who have off licenses here in the United Kingdom selling alcohol. Nabi alayhi salatu salam said even the money that is made from the sale of alcohol is cursed. Here cursed means there is no barakah in that money. There is no blessings in that money. And that money then to go buy groceries and food and chicken and meat and then you cook that meat and you put it on the table of your children. And your children eat from that. Haram, haram earning. Allah Almighty is telling us clearly, Allah Almighty is instructing us that this is the devil's work. Man, you're going to lose in life 
if you tend to drink, you will lose. And drinking, not just all types of intoxicants. We're talking spirits, we're talking beers, all types of intoxicants, all drink. Even one sip is haram. It is said that the one who drinks alcohol for one sip, even one sip, 40 days his ibadah is not accepted. For 40 days his worship is not accepted. This doesn't mean that he doesn't worship Allah. This means that there is deficiency in his ibadah. For he has this impurity in his body. The devil's work. He's, he's, he's running on the devil's work. And it's so sad and unfortunate to see Muslims getting drunk. But this is a sign of the final hour. The Prophet ﷺ told us that from amongst the signs of the final hour will be that drinking alcohol will be common. It will be normal in society. And we are living in that time. That's a, it's a minor sign, but we are deep in this sign. It is very, very common drinking alcohol. Very normal. We have old men who drink alcohol. We have young men who drink alcohol. We have Muslim sisters who drink alcohol. And alcohol is an intoxicant. Why is alcohol haram? Not just because Allah has said it's haram and Allah has told us to stay away from it. Logically, why is alcohol haram? Because of what alcohol will do. The Prophet ﷺ said, the root of all evil is drinking alcohol. It is Ummul Khaba'ith. It's the mother of evils. There's no evil like alcohol. because, And there's a, there's a great example that ulama and scholars and wise people use who's worse the murderer the rapist or the alcoholic the one who murders is he worse than the one who rapes a woman is the one who rapes a woman worse than the one who drinks alcohol who's worse from these three you may say murder is a sin such a sin that is unforgivable murder is worse rape to take the honor of a woman by force this is a sin, major sin. And then other major sins. They said, no, murder is not as bad as drinking alcohol. Nor is murder as worse as raping a woman. Uh, Nor no is uh, raping a woman worse than drinking alcohol. And they said, why? What logic is there? How can you say that if a woman has been done in this manner or a man has murdered, how, how is it possible that you're saying alcohol is worse than all of this? So, you know, a man, he can lose it and go and commit these sins. But you know, when you drink alcohol, alcohol is such a sin, such a disease, such a problem, such a vice, that at that moment when you've drunk alcohol and you've become drunk, you will then commit murder, rape, everything in one because of that one alcoholic drink. That is the, that is the danger of alcohol. Alcohol is the worst thing. We've seen Muslims acting like monkeys, drunk. It's shocking. And the, because you're, you're out of your senses. And Islam was sent as a religion. It's a way of life to keep us in our sense. The whole objective as Muslims is that we must remain sane at all times. We shouldn't get in a state of intoxicant. We should not be intoxicated. The moment you get into an intoxicated state, the Prophet ﷺ said, your iman is lifted from you. There is no iman in that person when he's drunk. There is no iman in that person when he commits zina. There is no iman in that person when he steals. His iman returns when he does some ulama, right? It means he returns when he does tawbah. Until then there is no iman. Or until he stopped the sin. We know that alcohol, drinking alcohol, and another intoxicant where a person loses his senses through which is what? Drugs. A modern day intoxicant. Here Al-Khamar is not just talking about drinking, it's also talking about drugs. We're talking anything that intoxicates you, takes you out of your senses. That is haram. And these drugs that lads are taking, cocaine is so readily accessible and available on the streets of Bradford, in Batley, in Dewsbury, in Liverpool, in Manchester. Cocaine is more... This used to be a rich man's drug, cocaine. Now cocaine, every... Young lad, every young person is drinking, uh, is snorting and smoking cocaine. Weed is no longer the, the norm. Now cocaine is the norm. We've got young lads who, who won't feel content till they've took a line of coke at night. 
They're not going to sleep at night till they've took a bit of coke. Or they're not going to sleep at night till they've, they've rolled their Rizla up and their Zoot up and they're going to smoke themselves. It's shocking what Muslims are doing. And what's worse, the one who's abusing drugs or the one who sells drugs? The one who's supplying it to the street? We've got Muslims in the month of Ramadan shutting drugs still. They're closing their fast and then boom, they're on their, they're on their graft. <laughs> what are you doing, man? On one hand, you're fasting for the sake of Allah. And on the other hand, you're going to earn haram to put into your mother's pocket and your father's pocket. What's the point? What are you going to gain from this? In the month of Ramadan, there's no fear left. And yet Allah told us, Ya amanu kutiba alaykum kama kutiba ala min kablikum la'allakum tattakoon. Fasting has been prescribed upon you believers so that you may become righteous and pious. You may instill the fear of Allah is instilled inside you. There is no fear in these men who, who fast and then shot drugs at the same time. And you know drug dealers are the scum of the earth. We know drug dealers, those who deal drugs, they're supplying, they're destroying families, they're destroying homes, they're destroying children, they're destroying their mothers and fathers' lives. It's not just one person they destroy, they're destroying communities, they're destroying households. And the problem with, the, with, with drinking and, and with drugs is that it's an addiction, like gambling. You know, you might say, I'm going to put one acre on, I'm going to gamble a little bit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink, just take a sip on that, hey, it's only a little bit of drink, what's going to happen? And you think, you know, I, I feel cool, or smoke a bit of drugs, yeah, you know what, fantastic. It's all right, it's only a bit of drugs. It's not going to do no harm. You're going to get high for a moment and then I'm okay. But then when you get high and the feeling, when you're in that zone, you're going to go back to it again and again and again and you just want to keep, you want that buzz. And you know, and then before you know it, you're an addict. You become addicted to it. Now, you're, whatever you earn during the week, you're going to go and spend it on buying your drugs. You're going to spend it on, on feeding this addiction. That's the problem. That's why Allah said, stay away from it because the devil will make you addicted to this. This is what the devil does. He wants you to become an addict. And the worst thing is, is he, on the day of judgment, you're going to blame him and say, oh, the devil made me do it. Or this guy. And you know what? Gonna, the devil's going to turn around and say, I didn't make you do nothing. Don't blame me. It's not my fault. I just whispered. I just told you. I got guys to, and, and they, they made you do it. You did it yourself. You had no self-control. You had no self-discipline. This is why drinking and drugs and gambling and, and sab and aslam are haram because they become addictions. When you read horoscopes, why is it haram? Why is it haram to read your horoscope and look into your future? Because it destroys your iman. Where is your faith in Allah? Your, your whole life? Your whole life is in the, in the control of Allah Almighty. Allah Almighty will do good by you. Allah Almighty will test you. This is life. Why do you need to jump that and, and see if I can find out what's going to happen in my life? Whether I've got good luck coming or bad luck coming or what's happening? And this is Allah Almighty is clearly instructing and telling us in the Quran, Fajtanibuhu, stay away from it. Stay away from it. From what? From the devil's works. This is the work of the devil. The one who drinks alcohol, the alcoholic, he will not enter into paradise. The one who breaks and severs family ties will not enter into paradise. The one who disrespects his mother and father will not enter into paradise. They're not going to enter paradise, these three people. Paradise is very far for the guy who disrespects his mom and dad. Paradise is very far for the one who, who drinks alcohol, who's an alcoholic, habitual drinker. Paradise is very far from the one who breaks ties with his brother and his sister and his mother and his father. He breaks ties with them. He, he breaks up with them. Oh, I don't talk to him no more. I don't, want to, I don't want to know him no more. These are major sins, major sins. Kabair. For which you must do sincere tawbah and ask Allah to forgive you for. And drinking alcohol, the, it's not just the one who drinks alcohol. It's also the one who supplies it. It's not just the drug abuser. It's the one who supplies the drugs. And why do people do it? For some people, having cocaine is recreational. For others, it's become an addiction. For others, it's, oh, I've got problems. I'm, I'm mentally, I'm not stable. I'm, I'm depressed, man. I need, I need weed. Weed takes me out of depression. You know, cocaine takes me out of depression. I just broke up with my wife. 
I tend to drinking. You, take, you know, I forget everything. No, you don't. It makes things worse. Um, and you, you you're, you're lying to yourself. The devil's lying to you, man. He's lying to you, trying to tell you this is the way forward, but it ain't the way forward. This is not the way forward. If anything, you are making a bigger hole than you were already in. Your life is going to get worse because you're going to spend your halal earned money or you're going to spend the money that you earn on these vices, on drugs, on drinking, on alcohol. And when you do that, what's going to happen? What's going what's to come out? And what's the result of it at the end? Children will be misguided. He will have no peace and no tranquility in his heart. He's going to be lost. And the devil, and the devil is going to be successful. He's going to say, look, I've got another man down. I misguided him. Another one's gone. And then I'm going to go for the next one and the next one and the next one. This is why these are the traps of the devil. These are the, 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 the ways of the devil. These are the devil's tricks and the traps. And these are the, the, this is the devil's work. He wants you to drink. But when you get drunk, then you will do stuff which is, which is going to cause discord in your life, into the life of your children, into the life of your parents. And, and he's going to destroy families. The Prophet ﷺ gave stern warning against this, that the mother of all evils is, is drinking alcohol. And the Prophet ﷺ informed us that the one who drinks alcohol will not enter into paradise. The Prophet ﷺ informed us about those individuals who spend their time drinking alcohol or who supply alcohol or who provide alcohol, what's going to happen to them? What's going to be the case? What's going to be the result? The curse of Allah is on such a person. My brothers and sisters, we need to wake our communities up. We need to make them aware and realize that these actions are haram. We need to stay away from them. And we need to tell brothers, and if you see brothers who are going through drug addiction and alcoholic, alcohol addiction and gambling addictions, then they need to turn to experts, people who are experts in taking them away from drugs and alcohol. You know, they need to detox. They need to get out of the, this out of their system. They need to go to a shrink. They need to go to a counselor. And they need to take advice. And they need to uh, go into rehabilitation and rehab. And they shouldn't be embarrassed to go into rehab. Why are you embarrassed to, to rehab from drinking and it's an addiction? Do you not understand? You're a Muslim, you read the kalima. Inshallah, inshallah, the kalima will save you. But it's, gonna, it's destroying you. Right now, this drinking and this smoking and this drugs and the gambling is going to destroy you. It's destroying your present at this moment in time. And eventually, present will become the future as well. You've got to stop it now. Turn to Allah. And I, my advice to those who drink, those who smoke, those who deal, those who sell, my advice to them is give this life up and do toba. This is the month of Ramadan. Do toba. Sincerely turn back to Allah and say, Oh Allah, I'm sorry for every drop of drink of alcohol, whether it's vodka, whether it's Jack Daniels, whether it's sea rock, whether it's grey goose, whatever it is that I've drank. Oh Allah, I make sincere toba that you forgive me for this and I will never go back to this. Oh Allah, I make sincere tawbah for every line of cocaine that I've snorted, that I've put into my mouth, on my teeth, into my gums, every zoot that I've smoked, every bit of weed, marijuana, black, whatever it is that I've smoked drugs. Oh Allah, I make sincere tawbah, please forgive me for every smoke that I've smoked that I should never have done. Forgive me, have mercy upon my soul. And then you, and the one who gambles, Oh Allah, for every moment and every time that I've gone into a, a gambling betting shop, I've gone into William Hill, or I've gone into, or I've downloaded these apps and I've put acres on, and I've gambled and I've put my halal money on this. Oh Allah, I make sincere tawbah. I ask you, Allah, to forgive me, for no one will forgive me except you. And I, I promise you by Allah, I promise you this. And Allah promises you this in the Quran. Don't despair of Allah's mercy. You could have sinned so much, so much. Your sins could have filled the entire earth, the entire seas and touched the skies. But you sincerely turned back to Allah and said, Oh Allah, forgive me, please. I beg you to forgive me. I promise you Allah Almighty will forgive you. It's as if you would never done that sin before. With the condition that you never go back to that sin. 
Make sure your tawbah is sincere. You have opportunity and chance. Allah will forgive every sin but shirk. And this is a chance. These are sins. We're humans. Humans fall into error. We get weak. We succumb to our desires, to the lusts. And this is human nature. And that's why the devil is, is our enemy. That's why our nafs ammara, bisu and nafs lawama, these are enemies. These are enemies that Allah Almighty has put in our lives that we must fight. This is the struggle. This is why we're here. This is why Allah created us. You're a man when you fight against these struggles. You're a man when you stand up against this. رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَبَيْهُنْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الشَّلَاءِ The real men are those who لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْهُنْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Business and money and dunya, drugs, luxuries, extravagance. These things, they don't distract them from the remembrance of Allah. They don't distract them from their prayers. They always turn back to Allah. We must always remain in a conscious state. We must stay in a, a state of soberness and sane and sanity and in a, in a state where our minds are focused. And we should, shouldn't pollute our minds. We shouldn't pollute our hearts and we shouldn't destroy our souls with the works of the devil. We should turn back to Allah Almighty. There's nothing that will cleanse your soul more. There is nothing that will cleanse your heart more than doing sincere tawbah and istighfar. Every single day daily, make it a habit that you read Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh 100 times. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayh. I seek forgiveness, istighfar from Allah wa atubu ilayh and I do tawbah to him. And tawbah, what does it literally mean in the Arabic language? Tawbah literally means to do ruju. Atubu ilayh means I return back to Allah. Allah forgive me and that. And you think Allah won't forgive you? If Allah could forgive the man who killed 99 and then 100, will he not forgive you? You think Allah won't forgive you for the sins you've committed? There's people who've done worse than you and they've turned back to Allah and Allah forgave them. Hayatun tayyiba. Allah Almighty says we gave them a new life, a beautiful life. That was the past life. Ask Allah for forgiveness. Do sincere tawbah and turn back to Allah. And Allah Almighty will forgive you. And this is the advice that we need to give to every young man and woman who is going through these problems of drinking, of drugs, of gambling, of the haram and the kabair that are out there. Don't despair. Don't give up on these mans. We as Muslims shouldn't be giving up on that drug, drug dealer or that drug addict. Or we, should not, we shouldn't give up. We should go to them and say, my brother, this is the wrong life. You're making it, you're doing it the wrong way. Turn back to Allah. If we don't turn to them, who is going to turn to them? And the one who tries to bring the drug dealer into the house of Allah, the one who changes the drug dealer, inspires him, who guides him, how great is that, that young man's maqam? How great is that Mawlana or Imam's maqam? How great is that Sheikh's maqam? How great is that person's maqam? It doesn't have to be an Imam or a Sheikh. It could be just a brother and say, my brother, stop this, turn back to Allah. How great will his maqam be? Adalu al khayri kafa'ilihi. He will get equal amount of reward as the one who's turned back to Allah. For the tawbah that Allah has forgiven him, the man who inspired him to make that tawbah, Allah will give him forgiveness as well. And this is why it's important, my brothers and sisters, that we turn back to Allah. Allah Almighty, accept what has been said. May Allah forgive me if I've said anything wrong. Wrong is from me. I would like to thank once again Al Wudud Academy, who've given me and afforded me this opportunity to speak on uh, such an important subject and topic. Uh, such as the, the dangers of drugs and alcohol, something which I've been talking for the last 11 years of my life as an imam, even longer than that, since the age of 19 when I became an imam. This is a topic which I've spoke about extensively and I've tried to help a lot of young people, brothers and sisters, to get away from the drugs and alcohol, to get away from gambling and all these vices and the devil's work. May Allah Almighty accept our efforts. May Allah Almighty reward the brothers at Al Wadud Academy and also uh, Jamia Muhammadiyya Ghawsiya, the, the, the main Jamia Masjid in Batli as well. Allah bless the brothers there and the Aimma and the Ulama. Wa aqul qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa akhru da'waya an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad kama tuhibbu wa tarda alayh bi antu salli alayh. Allahumma anta as-salam wa minka as-salam. Tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayta yadha al-jalali wa al-ikram. Allahumma la mani'a lima a'atayta. ولا معطي لما منعت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار My brothers and sisters collectively just for this one moment in your hearts 
close your eyes and ask Allah to sincerely forgive you and do tawbah. Nastaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli dhanbin wa natubu ilayh. Nastaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli dhanbin wa natubu ilayh. Nastaghfirullah Rabbana min kulli dhunubina wa natubu ilayh ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa natubu ilayk ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa natubu ilayk ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalkihi sayyidina wa nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ma'in. Bi rahmatika ya rahmur rahmin.